And thank you for your patience, we'll get going. Um, so my name is Amanda Wild. I'm the Senior Project Manager for Parks Development with the City of St. Albert Recreation and Parks. I just have a few housekeeping items to go through as we go through. Um, we have a great team supporting us, so I can't see any of your questions or comments, um, but we do have a team here uh, keeping an eye out for you. So if you have any issues, please just use the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. Um, so your role today as participants is just to sit back, enjoy the presentation, and then engage with the project team during our Q&A session at the end. We do encourage you to submit questions throughout the presentation as they occur to you. Just use the Q&A button um, and we'll respond at the end of the presentation. Just so you're aware, all of our participants are muted, um, so you won't be able to talk or share your video during this presentation. Again, use the Q&A button if you do have anything that you need to bring to the project team's attention. Uh, there is an online survey to share your feedback on the proposed concept plan options that we're going to present here tonight. You can find that on our website and our project page at www.stalbert.ca slash Kingsmead. And that survey is live as of right now, so please do go have a look. The concept plan options that we're sharing with you today have been uploaded to the website as well. Um, so if you wanna have a look at those as we're talking, feel free. Um, and just a little bit of a disclaimer, this session is being recorded by the City of St. Albert and is intended to be shared and posted on the city's website or through social media platforms. In addition, the city will retain this recording for internal retention purposes related to administering the city's public participation events. The personal information collected during this session is protected by the provisions of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. We'll just uh, start off with a little bit of a welcome and introductions from the project team working on the Kingsmead Park concept plan. A little bit of background on the site. Um, an overview of what we heard during our first survey process. Um, then we'll invite our consultants, IBI group, to talk through some of the concept plan options that we have for you to provide your input on. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some questions and, and answers. Uh, we have planned this session to close at about eight o'clock today, but we'll play that by ear based on how many questions we get. If we need to finish earlier, we'll do so. And I'm just gonna ask my project team to wave as I introduce them. So again, myself, Amanda Wild, I'm the Senior Project Manager and Project Lead on uh, Kingsmead Park Concept Planning. Then we have uh, Chad Paddock, who's our Engineering Project Manager working with the City of St. Albert. And Tara Fazer is our Community Recreation Coordinator here in Recreation and Parks. Uh, Wade Benfield, who has been doing all of the wonderful marketing and communications and web pages that you've seen with the project so far. And then we have Luke Deneger, our project manager and landscape architect from IBI Group. And Sarah Sherman, who is our public engagement sec specialist from IBI Group supporting us in the events today and the survey that uh, you'll see online. So just a quick reminder, um, a lot of this information was shared in the first round of public engagement, but we're excited to continue working with you to design our new Kingsmead Park. Again, this is a 2.3 hectare park located along Kingswood Boulevard, adjacent to Kingsmead Crescent and across from Kingsdale Crescent. The site is intended to be a community park within our city's Parks and Open Space Standards and Guidelines classification system. This information has been shared on our web and shared as part of the uh, first phase of public engagement, but it is really important to note that there are a number of factors that go into making sustainable decisions and coming towards the final design. Generally, we describe these by four different areas, um, publicly acceptable, and this is where your input is still required. Um, we heard both the desire for certain activities as well as concerns around safety, parking, uh, privacy, and speed that we'll continually assess as we move through the, the design process and that continues into this stage of engagement as well. Um, then we have our environmental sustainability. So we assess are there any environmental constraints or issues that need to be considered throughout the life cycle of the project. Through the first survey and through additional site investigations that we've done since then, um, we are ensuring that water is properly draining from the site. Concerns with wind and sun exposure are, mi are mitigated through plantings and seeding shelters and that we're able to manage the current agricultural uh, interface that will exist with the park for a while. The next area that we look at is technical feasibility. So what are those constraints and operations from a technical um, perspective that need to be considered, including the site's size, location, and configuration? And lastly, we look at financial feasibility. As we move towards our final design, we're continually assessing the construction costs and making sure that both the construction and operation costs are in line with similar size parks in the city and are sustainable long-term. The impact Input gathered during this phase of the project supports effective and sustainable long-term decisions for this park space. 
So we are now in the process of assessing different options for the concept plan. Your feedback at this stage helps the project team understand the, what the preferred design should include. It also identifies further concerns or issues that need to be addressed before we complete the design. Once the concept plan has been finalized, which should happen um, in late November, early December of this year, um, we begin detailed design. And that step really brings in the technical considerations, confirms the final design, and looks at detailed locations, sizes, and specifics for the chosen amenities on the site. At this phase, we'll be, the community will be able to identify any of those last questions or concerns that may uh, arise from the design and we can make final adjustments. We are planning to start construction in 2021 uh, with the goal of having all construction completed on or before December 31st of 2021. Now what we heard. So our survey that we ran from August 21st to September 7th had amazing response. We had 326 respondents of which 71% of residents of respondents um, indicated they were Kingswood residents, um, which was amazing. Um, the, what the survey really sought to understand was what the activities people were looking to do on the park space, what kind of were the general age ranges of potential park users, what's that look and feel or that experience you want when walking into this park space, and then any comments or concerns um, that uh, people may have. So we had a total of 230 responses from the Kingswood neighborhood um, and the rest of the responses came from across St. Albert um, with very little uh, input from any of our regional partners. So we asked residents who is most likely to use the park. Results were focused on adults, so as you can see with 41, um, sorry, 61% of the respondents um, saying that adults would use this park, followed by students aged 6 to 12 years, followed again by youth aged 13 to 18 years. Um, so we, we know that we have a little bit older of, a of an audience here um, in this park and are really focused on providing those amenities that'll stretch across all of the ages. We didn't have any age groups um, that weren't represented in potential users for the park. We then took all of your, your feedback and we asked everyone, what were your top five activities that you'd like to participate in the park? Across all of the priorities, so all five, the top rated um, activities or amenities that people wanted to see were a playground or play equipment that came quite strongly, uh, opportunities for walking or hiking, sledding, skating, and opportunities for soccer. So those were overall across all five priorities, what we heard. Diving a little bit more into what were the highest priority items, people really wanted to see a playground um, as their first priority, walking and hiking. Um, in this one, we saw pickleball come up as a, a desired activity in this space. Interestingly enough, pickleball does not show up in the top five priorities, um, either for priority one or priority two activities for Kingswood respondents. Um, so there's definitely a lot of interest from a community and a citywide perspective, but maybe not as much interest from a local perspective for pickleball. But um, we did hear that quite a bit. Ice skating and then basketball for the um, highest desired activities. Moving into um, kind of those secondary priorities, people really wanted a playground again, walking and hiking again, quite strong, sledding, ice skating, and then spaces and opportunities for different types of social gathering. Um, kind of rounded up the top five for the secondary pri priorities. Next, we asked what people wanted the park to look and feel like. And it really generated a lot of really neat and interesting ideas that are going to provide uh, inspiration to the project team, but are really hard to capture in this kind of analysis. Within the wide array of desired look and feel, though, we did get some really strong preferences, um, preference towards calm space, green spaces, natural spaces, um, but that was juxtaposed against the idea of an energetic or active space. Um, so what we drew from that is a balance of both and definitely an opportunity to have calm areas of the park uh, space and areas of the park that are more energetic or more active. Um, as we move towards detailed design, we will take this input in particular further um, to look at color, material choice, planting types, as well as any kind of theming if we uh, do move towards a potential play, uh, play equipment area. So on top of all of the great ideas and activities and desires um, we heard from our residents, we did hear a number of concerns. Um, a lot of um, focus around parking and speed along Kingswood Boulevard. Um, a lot of things around privacy and noise and garbage and um, just undesirable activities through the park. Um, 
So through the design of the park, we've accommodated and tried to manage these concerns wherever possible, it includes through the application of crime prevention through environmental design or SEPTED principles uh, to address potential vandalism, uh, provision of garbage cans in convenient and logical places, um, and the use of strategic placement of amenities and the introduction of additional landscaping to provide buffers to existing residential housing and the streets uh, to protect pri privacy, mitigate noise, and manage safety concerns. So as I mentioned, the biggest concern that we heard was traffic and parking um, and speed along, um, particularly speed along Kingswood Boulevard. Parking along Kingswood Boulevard has been calculated, um, calculating either side of the street and removing any potential crosswalks. There's parking available on that street without impacting the residential parking that exists now for approximately 57 vehicles. Um, which really makes on-site parking within the park space itself unnecessary. Parking lots are quite expensive to build and they have a high uh, maintenance cost. If the design of the park um, does bring a lot of people towards um, the, uh, sorry, towards Kingswood Boulevard, we would look at reassessing that and, and putting a parking lot into the design. But at this point, the project team doesn't feel like either of the concept options we're going to share with you would require that. Um, there are also a number of considerations in the design to manage seed and speed and safety around Kingswood Boulevard. The concept plan options use landscaping and placement of amenities as visual cues to transition park users from the park space to the roadway with some physical barriers through planting while still making sure visibility into the park remains good. Um, either option is likely to rep to result in the implementation of a playground zone, which would reduce speed near the park to 30 kilometers per hour. The design additionally proposes two marked crosswalks with flashing beacons and curb extensions to bring residents safely to and from the park site. So while ideally the design of the park addresses all of the comments and concerns, there were a number of items that cannot be addressed through the park ad development process. In particular, the future development of Kingswood, including the addition of trails off the park site, future use of the current agricultural lands, and the remaining allocation of municipal to reserve are to be addressed in the future. The city is working closely with the landowner for the area and have shared the comments and concerns that we received through the survey with them. The developer at this point has no solid plans for development, however will continue to work with the city when the time is right for completing the, con completing the construction of Kingswood. At this point, I'm happy to introduce Luke Denager of IBI Group to walk through the concept plan options with you, which I'm sure is what everybody is dying to see. Thank you, Manta. Okay, so to give a bit of context to the project, um, we're going to take a look at the area. Boom. Um, there we go. So uh, in the blue uh, shape in the center, that's proposed Kingsman Park like Manda pointed out earlier in her presentation, the yellow circle and the blue circle uh, represent 400 meter distance and 800 meter distance from the center of the park. Uh, and we, this was done just to illustrate exactly what was around there uh, when we first started doing the concept. So we've got Wilbury Park, we've got Windermere Park, uh, we've got Dodger Dog Park, Red Willow Park, and Kensington Park. And all of these have certain amenities. For example, Willoughby's got a uh, sports area, an outdoor rink, playgrounds, uh, Dodge Dog Park, of course, is a, is a, a dog park. And there's a fair amount of amenities um, in Red Wolf Park as well. The red uh, and green lines that you see are the existing walkways. Uh, we've split those in two, actually, the existing concrete walkways. One of them, uh, there's two of them actually uh, just north of the proposed Kingsmead Park. And then there's an ex existing multi use trail to the south. You can see that uh, small green. Uh, line at the bottom of the um, of the drawing. Now that kind of helped us establish exactly what was within that area and 400 and 800 meters is typically uh, considered typically a walking distance for the average person. So this gave us an idea of what amenities already existed within uh, a walking distance and what could accommodate, uh, what, um, sorry, Kingsmead Park could accommodate uh, or you know, accentuate based on the other amenities that we have around there. So we are just going to go on to the next slide. So here we are with option, option one. 
before I get into the options, uh, I just want to point out that the concept plans, we've got two options, option one, option two, both were designed based on the previous slide that you saw, which was, which were the amenities uh, within the context of uh, the proposed park. But also, uh, we based our design on the, um, the community park standards uh, that were taken out of the um, open space standards and guidelines for the community parks. Uh, the design is also based on the site conditions and the topography. Uh, and if I do believe everybody here is quite familiar with the site, uh, it's fairly high to the south around Kingsdale Crescent. As you move north towards, uh, further down towards Kingswood Boulevard, it kind of flattens out. So there's a fairly pronounced hill or topography to, to the south of the, of, the, of the park. So that was one uh, factor that we took into consideration. The other one was uh, what we heard report. Amanda uh, gave us the numbers and also uh, showed us the priorities, priority one, priority two. So that was taken into account. Uh, and also we took advantage of the existing uh, site conditions. So having said that, in option one, and these are basically the same elements in both options, but they've been moved around and there's a couple of elements that we've added in the second option that you'll see. So it basically consists of um, an outdoor hockey rink, uh, which is that um, brown rectangular shape in the center. Uh, next to it, to the left, is a multi-use uh, sports court uh, where we could have uh, basketball, mini soccer pitch, uh, and we could have various uh, sports, court, uh, sports courts, uh, including pickleball and or tennis. As we move uh, further to the north, um, we would have a ring maintenance and storage hut. Uh, and then just to the left of that, uh, of that the, um, the, brown, the brown square or rectangle, that would be an, uh, an all-season social hub. That would include picnic shelters and tables, benches, uh, shade structure, barbecues, and outdoor warming space. And as we move further north, then we get into the active area. Um, a bit more active area where we've got uh, playground structures uh, and elements for both two to five year olds and five to two year olds, which are separated by just uh, benches and a small green space. Then next to Kingswood Boulevard, we've got an unstructured open space uh, in, in the summertime. And this is designed where the area is fairly flat uh, on this site. Um, and then in winter, it would be a socialized surface. Uh, with or without lighting. Uh, it would not have any boards. Um, the, the ice uh, surface would be uh, delineated by snow banks. And then if you come around a bit more, uh, if you see the trails and those brown uh, elements to the south, sorry, of the, of the park, those are what we call interactive uh, landscape amenities. So it's keeping in with the theme that we've heard in the What We Heard report that people would like to see this natural, would like to see a, a fair amount of activity, activities. Uh, it would, they would like it to be dynamic, yet it, they would like to like it to be a restful place. So by doing interactive landscape amenities, we kind of satisfy both, uh, all these visions in our, in our view. Um, not only that, but we also add something that's kind of unusual is that these can be considered, you know, sculptures or, you know, land elements or land art but it also fun uh, interactive place. So you would have a balance beam, a zigzag beam, step, stepping logs. Um, you would have a bike, uh, bike skill ramp as well. Um, and then tying that up, uh, tying all that up is the, um, the multi-use trail, a national trail, three meters, high, uh, three meters wide. It's not quite one kilometer, but that could also serve uh, not only to go from one activity to the other and one amenity to the other, but also if people want to do an inside jogging loop, or whatever to time their thing, uh, it certainly could, uh, could serve for that purpose. So that's it for option one. Now to go to option two. So as you can see in option two, there are some familiarities with option one. We've got the playgrounds. We've got the um, multi-use sports court. We have a social rink uh, surface, but in this case, a hockey rink has been replaced with a small sledding hill. Uh, and again, um, this is to take advantage of the site topography, which uh, is fairly high to the south. And as it goes down, it flattens out to, to the south. So it's basically the same elements uh, with the exception of, in this case, we would have a separate warming hub. Um, 
And then uh, the social social hub would be the same. Um, in this case, we've moved the playground closer to Kingswood Boulevard around that flat section. Uh, and then we've moved the uh, social ring to the south, as opposed to uh, where it used to be next to Kingswood Boulevard. The multi-use sports court kind of remains the same. The reason why we moved uh, the amenities further to the south is to, sorry, to the north, is to give a bit more space for the small sliding hill and the runout area. Um, and because it is a small sliding hill, there's a lot less uh, asphalt trails. Uh, we do not have the interactive landscape elements in there. Uh, and then in the summertime, uh, the, the sliding hill would be a uh, naturalized meadow. Uh, as you can see, both options also, um, we've tried to add some privacy um, to existing homes to the north with added, there's already some spruce trees planted there, uh, but we would uh, put in more trees and more shrubs to increase the, um, the privacy, but without compromising the septa, the septa um, sorry, policies. Uh, and that same thing would apply also to the south side of the park where we'd have some fairly intense planting, just to isolate the park from Kingswood Boulevard, give it a bit more privacy, but also give it that kind of nice urban park feel. This would apply to both options. And that's it for option two. Um, we've covered pretty much everything. So these are just reference images of the elements we're talking about. So multi-use multi -use sports court could be either an asphalt base or it could be um, man-made tiles, uh, which are for season. Uh, they're synthetic uh, and they're fairly easy to maintain. Uh, and then you've got examples of social skating, skating rinks with lighting, an example of a sledding hill and warming huts. Uh, the most interesting, not the most interesting, one of the interesting images is to write the interactive landscape. And this is what I was describing earlier, where you've got the zigzag balance beam, um, the stepping logs and the bike, uh, the bike uh, ability ramp. Uh, these are magnets for kids. Um, they just get take to the logs and start jumping, and it's actually quite nice to see uh, the kids enjoying themselves. And we've got a second uh, sheet where we show more proposed amenities. In which case, in this case, we show the playgrounds. So the playgrounds on the top ex are existing um, playgrounds in Saint Albert. Uh, the picnic shelters are examples of certain picnic shelters you can, can use. And then the playground picture uh, where you've got the stepping logs that are incorporated into uh, a playground. So that's it for the two options. I do believe now we are going to the Q&A. Uh, Amanda, back to you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Luke. Um, so we'll direct you right now to the Q&A panel um, on your screen to put any questions. Um, we have our lovely Sarah Sherman. She'll be um, reading out questions and directing them to the right staff. Um, so we'll, we'll just uh, let Sarah go. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amanda. Um, hello, I'm Sarah Sherman. Um, so I will just have got, we've got a couple questions that have come through during uh, the presentation so far, but um, feel free to keep sending them our way, even if they're just comments. Um, we're just happy to uh, have you involved in the discussion for these two concepts for um, Kingsmead Park. Um, so the first question uh, is for Luke. Um, there was a comment that sledding is an interesting one as it's a very flat space. Um, so now that you were able to show on the concept plan uh, where exactly that sledding hill would be, um, could you maybe elaborate on how that would, how a, a steep enough slope would be, would be able to sure. be added? <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's fairly flat when we get to pass the, um, the southern part of Kingsdale Crescent. Uh, it's, it's a nice gentle slope. Uh, when we start from the north part, sorry, the south part of Kingsdale Crescent, but we'll also accentuate the slope by building up uh, the hill itself. Now it wouldn't be uh, a massive buildup because the park is, is 2.3 hectares and sliding hills by their, na by their nature uh, take up a lot of space. But we would basically build it up to to give it a bit more uh, fun factor, I guess, a bit more speed. Uh, so we have to modify the topography of the terrain a bit. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, next question for Amanda. Um, I would prefer that pickleball be kept to larger general area parks. Uh, it would cause too much traffic in our already busy neighborhood. Um, could you maybe comment on that or? Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, so pickleball um, your, is a very high demand activity. Uh, both concept options show a multi-use court. Uh, so it's not, not a large tournament facility or anything like that. People could bring their own nets um, and play a game, but it wouldn't be a dedicated pickleball facility. Um, those type of facilities need a bit larger of a site with a parking lot, uh, generally speaking. Um, so the, the concept plans would allow people to play pickleball, but it would not be any kind of large or main focus of the use of that space. Excellent. Um, next question for Luke. Uh, it's a series of, of two questions. First one, why can't there be the interactive amenities in option two? Um, we can certainly consider that. Uh, initially, we want to make uh, as much, leave as much room for a sitting hill. Uh, but if the overall um, sentiment is to have uh, interactive activities in both options, we can certainly see if we can accommodate those. And then the next question, what else can be done with the meadow in the summer? The entire adjacent field is already a meadow. Uh, good question. Uh, this would be, a, it would be a meadow, it wouldn't be, uh, I do believe it's alfalfa in the agri agricultural field. Uh, so this would be a, gra a grassed meadow. People could walk, could picnic. Uh, again, it's it's a sledding hill, so it would it would be steep at the top, not that steep uh, in the middle at the bottom. Uh, but it would be basically an unstructured open space, so people can enjoy, uh, you know, seeing the views. Uh, I should mention also that the views from that side, from the south, and also from where the uh, the blue uh, multi-use uh, sports court and the the social hub are. The views to the west are actually quite nice, so um, that's why we've installed a couple of seats to the south there, so people can sit down and admire the, and, and look at the views. Uh, but it would be basically kind of an unstructured open space. Um, and I think that also responds to kind of the needs assessment, um, the first survey that was done that requested more of a natural feel of the park. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so next question uh, for Amanda, is there a cost difference to the two concepts? So we're still working through um, potential costing of the parks. There is a slight co cost difference. Um, outdoor rinks in particular are a fairly expensive amenity to build, but very popular in our community. Um, so there is, there is some slight differences and it will depend on the final design. Um, but I would say that option two is the le less expensive of the options um, with option one, um, with having the outdoor rink there a little bit more expensive. Okay. Um, next question for Amanda, um, is there going to be lighting? Yeah, that's a great question. So our ice surfaces, because of how dark it gets in the winter, are typically lit. Um, it is directional lighting. Um, an LED so directed down onto the ice surface so it shouldn't impact anyone nearby um, but none of the other amenities would be lit. Um, next question for Luke. Uh, I am wondering where the crosswalk will be. We are on Kendall Crescent and cars whip up the hill and are traveling so fast. I would worry about young children crossing around Kendall Crescent. Um, yeah, so if you see the, um, and I wish I could have a pointer, uh, there you go, there. so this pointer, there would, would be one crosswalk there with a curb extension, which is a traffic calming measure, that would be the one to the south, and then to the north, uh, there would be another one uh, with curb extensions, and also that add as a traffic calming measure, there would also be some flashing, uh, what they call pedestrian crossing, uh, flashing rectangular uh, strobes, I do believe they're called, uh, in both locations as well. 
And that, sorry, the, the traffic and the speed, that was something that was brought to our attention. And it was also mentioned during the survey. And it was also brought to our attention by uh, other people also while we we're doing the, uh, the site analysis uh, and inventory as well. So we are quite aware of the, um, of the, uh, the speed of some of the vehicles that travel along uh, Kingswood Boulevard. Thank you. Um, next question for Amanda. Would there be a way to incorporate Frisbee golf as there isn't any Frisbee courses in St. Albert? It seems like in option one, it could easily be added. Yeah, thank you for that. So we did um, go through all of the, uh, sorry, through the survey that we did. Um, we did receive a few comments around um, disc golf and Frisbee golf. Um, it wasn't a very highly rated desired amenity, um, but it could be certainly looked at if we do see or hear strongly from um, this next round of public engagement um, that people really wanted. It's certainly something we could look to incorporate, um, but it just wasn't something that was high priority within the survey results. I'm sorry, it just to add to that also, uh, Amanda, is the, uh, the um the unstructured open spaces in both uh, in both options uh, that serve as social ice rinks or ice surfaces in wintertime, uh, those could accommodate you know a small frisbee uh, ultimate frisbee game or uh, uh, other um, activity. That's why we call them an unstructured uh, open space. Um, we we've just had a question. Uh, who is Chad Paddock? Um, Manda, maybe you could introduce him as the um, project manager, engineering project manager. Yeah, maybe I'll just let Chad introduce himself so people can put a face to a name if that's okay, Chad. Even better. Uh, sure. Hi, uh, hi everyone. I thank you uh, for taking your uh, your time out of your day to come and uh, hear our our uh, concept plans here and uh, options. I'm the uh, project manager in regards to the capital projects group here with the city. Um, so once we go through the uh, the concept design here and move into the detailed design, I will be helping uh, cooperate with a consultant uh, the ideas that we come up here today with, and then uh, uh, work with them in regards to the construction management and completion of the project uh, completely. So I will be uh, associated with this project until uh, the final completion here in November of next year. Yes, Chad will be our design and construction guru and coordinate all of the efforts on the city's behalf when it comes to our contractors and um, actually getting the site built. Excellent, thank you. Um, so next question for Luke. Um, basketball and ice hockey were not popular responses. Why were these prioritized over more popular responses such as soccer or open field activities? And then Manda, if you could weigh in as well. I think that would be a question more for Amanda. Okay. Sure. Um, so in terms of uh, soccer, uh, to get a full-size sports field on this site was would require us to regrade a very significant part of the site because of the existing terrain. Um, so that felt like it was a bit lower of a priority because we do have soccer fields at all of our nearby schools as well. Um, we do have um, open space where the social ice surface would be in the winter accommodated in both concept options. Um, and basketball certainly, and I, I know these courts look a lot like basketball courts, um, but they were intended to capture a number of court uses, including tarmac uses, people that just want to go mess around on, on some tarmac with their scooters or, or what have you, as well as capturing tennis and pickleball and basketball. Um, so soccer again was just a um, site constraint issue um, and then uh, the courts were meant to capture kind of that broad breadth of different types of court activities that people were looking to see. Did that answer the question Sarah? For sure yeah wonderful. Um, next question for Luke, what will the playground base be? Will we get to weigh in on the specific details of the playground area? Um, our preference would be to have a base that is not sand, um, such as mulch, rubber, or rock. The design of the <coughs> excuse me, design of the uh, uh, the playgrounds will be based on on the uh, engineering standards for the city of Saint Albert, which have specific uh, specifications for the type of surfacing we can use in playgrounds. Excellent. 
Um, next question for Luke again. Uh, neither of these options seem calming to me at all, especially when the when the playgrounds will be directly behind my house in option one. I also think having a social hut will be a magnet for loud late night visitors visits from teenagers. Um, I understand the, the comment. I understand the, um, the uh, I guess, the concern in regards to the playgrounds. Um, we do try and mitigate that with the additional screen planting um, with the trees and the shrubs. Uh, the all-season social hub, um, that would be kind of, um, regardless if you just put picnic table or experience, is the the um but the all season social hub uh and because of the location it's not tucked in the back somewhere it's actually in a fairly uh prominent location that can be seen regardless if there are trees around the unstructured open spaces or the playgrounds an option too it's in a fairly open space that's visible from uh kingswood boulevard and that's also visible from the residents uh, in kingsall crescent and also uh to the north of the park um so, and it wouldn't be a closed structure, it would be an open structure as well. So hopefully that would be, that would deter, and again, it, it kind of break, uh, follows the septet uh, principles, whereas uh, we can have eyes on the structure and the structure can look at also eyes on the street to Kingswood Boulevard. But your concerns are noted, uh, and we can certainly, you know, depending on which option uh, is favorable, we can certainly look around as one to find the, the location or the size of the playgrounds as well. Yeah, if I could weigh in, Luke. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, that's a great comment. And we did hear a lot about, about calming. Um, it is difficult to pick out in the concept plans, but these kind of fuzzy bubbles are plantings um, to increase the noise mitigation, reduce the wind. Um, so the idea is to, to make it a very green, lush space that does have a lot of buffers built into it. Um, option two is obviously the less programmed and less busy um, park of the options. Um, but we're happy to continue to hear from residents if this is still too busy for people's preferences. We can certainly um, look to remove different amenities, but we did try and try and hit that balance of people really wanted a playground. Um, and there were a lot of activities that people wanted to do that um, aren't necessarily calming in and of themselves. Um, so again, thank you for that feedback and we'll, we'll certainly take that to heart. Um, next question for Amanda. How will the choice be made between the two options and the variations? So we don't expect to end up with either option one or option two. Um, the survey, um, as you'll see as you move through the questions, um, is designed to pick out those things that really appeal to people and those things that cause concern. Um, so the, the project team will assess all of the input that comes in through the survey. Um, look at all of our technical considerations, our cost considerations, um, all of those environmental concerns, um, and our project team will um, come to a final design um, once we've taken all of that feedback into consideration, doing our best to manage all of the different pieces of information and especially all the feedback that we hope to receive through this phase. Hopefully we'll get some clear direction from the public on um, what people really like want to see and, and where, where we might need to, to uh, shift or, or hybridize the two options. Excellent, excellent. Very good question. Um, for another, the next, uh, sorry, another one for, Ma for Amanda. Um, can the curb extension be added further north, sorry, pardon me, farther south um, as, as well to allow crossing the other side more safely between Kendall and Kirkwood? Um, maybe I'll not to throw Chad under the bus, but Chad, can you respond to that one? Sure, yeah. Uh, I know that this is the first kind of kick of the can in regards to the uh, locations of those crossings uh, um, at this point. There is uh, the potential for uh, a few other crossings that could occur uh, over at the lower southern uh, side of uh, Kingsdale uh, Crescent there to, to help with uh, with crossing to the trail network. And as, as the trail network within, within the, uh, the design does evolve, uh, things will start to kind of go where we want, you know, we want everyone to cross and cross safely. So 
um, there, that is potentially a, a, an option that can be added. And, uh, you know, it would have the feel if I was going to describe it so that uh, parents and, and uh, user groups are out there. I mean, it'd be very much like uh, a safe journeys crossing with a, a very nice, uh, you know, bubble out with the flashing lights and uh, again, the high, uh, uh, high visible markings across the roadway so that, um, you know, these, these are going to be uh, safe areas for you and your, your uh, loved one to cross. So um, it, it's just to keep in mind, uh, as Amanda was saying, it's a, it's a working ether and, and we will uh, be looking at those cross parks uh, with the transportation group as well. Excellent. Um, next question for Luke. Can you give more details on the warming area in concept one? Uh, you're muted, Luke. Sorry. Uh, there we go. My mouse kind of went crazy on me. Uh, sorry. So can you, the question was again, uh, option one, more details about the warming, the warming <laughs> shelter? Yeah, in concept one. So in concept one, the, the, the outdoor warming space would be, uh, one of the ideas that, that um, we're looking at is, would be the, um, the electric heaters are suspended that you see sometimes in outdoor terraces. Uh, it would be, an, again, it would be an open structure uh, and it would be oriented so that it is, uh, it is away from the wind. People who are sitting in a warming structure are protected somewhat from the wind. Uh, it would be something fairly simple. Uh, I do believe it's called an infrared warming, uh, warming element. Uh, and yeah, that's what, what we're, uh, we're looking at right now for this option. Yeah, and just to add on to that, the idea behind the warming hut is obviously um, to support skating um, and those that want to, you know, switch their skates out, um, not in their cars and not come out with their with their skate guards on. Um, but also the idea that we are a winter city, um, we have winter five, six months of the year. So trying to find ways in our park spaces to bring people outdoors and make them as comfortable as we can um, and enjoying the outdoors, um, even in the middle of winter. So that's kind of where that idea came from. Um, next question for Luke. Does the social hub have a restroom facility? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, thank you. Um, just going to take a quick little pause here. Um, lots of, of questions coming in. Thank you very much for uh, being so involved um, and we'll have a few more questions to read in a minute. Um, question for Luke. Does the court area have basketball nets? Uh, the multi-use the multi uh, uh, multi uh, sports courts could have basketball nets, uh, which is uh, part of the, the, the advantage of having a multi-use sports court is that you can have like mini soccer pitch, basketball, various courts, sports, tennis court, uh, pickleball. So certainly, yeah, it would. Uh, and again, depending on the surface that we're going to be using, either an actual tarmac or synthetic uh, and, and set synthetic uh, surface, uh, but both could accommodate basketball uh, basketball court as well and various basketball nets. And just to support that in the survey that you'll uh, hopefully go and fill out after this, um, there are some questions about what kind of uses should be kind of the primary design drivers behind that space. Um, so different sizes of courts, different configurations of courts, different surfacing um, is really diff driven by the primary activities or the main activities you want to plan for. Uh, so we do ask a question about that in the survey. Excellent. Uh, next question for Chad. I have a concern with the strobe lighting at the crosswalks, particularly for residents that live directly adjacent to Kingswood Boulevard. Will they be continuously flashing to the point that blinds will now have to be closed to avoid the annoying flash? 
That's a great question. And uh, we, I can totally understand uh, your concern with regards to the strobing light. No, they, they don't uh, continue flashing for uh, for all time. They are, uh, the, the sensors are, or the flashes that we do put into these crossing elements are uh, push to serve. So you push them, they'll flash uh, while the crossing is on and then they will be turning off. They're also, um, a lot of them are, if not, uh, are, are solar paneled uh, or solar pan uh, powered so that uh, there is not a whole lot of draw or, or need of uh, electrical type of uh, infrastructure involved in that. Uh, they're also kind of uh, angled so that they're not uh, pointed towards houses and, and that sort of thing. They're more focused in regards to the driver, uh, obviously on the roadway. So we would, you know, if we did obviously put them in and there was some concern of flashing into the, uh, the into the household, uh, then we could adjust them by a little bit of the angle and that to make sure that they are directed in the, the direction they are in there. Um, and uh, so we don't we don't really believe that there would be that concern, but we are a candidate of, of the obviously neighborhood uh, housing in that sort of situation. Excellent. Um, next question for Luke. Uh, I think it's, it appears to be more of a comment. Um, I think continuing the feel on Kingswood Boulevard further along will make the park more welcoming, calm and safe instead of just putting it directly at the park limits. It would make the park feel much larger for minimal cost. Um, I'm not quite sure about what you mean by the continuing the feel on Kingswood Boulevard. Is that more of the kind of the tree line along Kingswood Boulevard, perhaps? Um, that's more of a natural park feeling. Um, is that what you guys got from that as well? Um, yeah, and just, uh, I guess, um, trying to, to, to um, answer that comment on the, on the comment, I guess. Um, in both options, there's some planting next to the playgrounds and also the un unstructured um, open space in option one. Um, so it's basically the same feel as the street planting on Kingsville Boulevard in that area. The other areas are a combination of the street planting and also more of a naturalized feel to it, uh, which is what we kind of decided to go in both options based on the comments that we've heard uh, and what we heard report or that we read and what we heard report, which was a lot of the responses wanted it to be a more of a naturalized feel to it rather than a more structured uh, typical urban park. So we try and balance both by having the, the active recreation area, uh, which encompasses the playgrounds and, and um, unstructured open space, more of a urban park feel with, with specimen trees like shown on that option. And option two is the same thing as well, whereas the passive recreation area uh, in both options are more of a naturalized feeling to it. So I do hope that answers the, uh, I guess, the question that was in the comment. Mm -hmm. um, next question for Amanda. Is there a reason to not have washroom facilities or is this a city standard of some kind? Yeah, that's a great question. This is a city standard um, where our community parks do not have permanent washroom facilities. Uh, in the city currently you'll find um, permanent washroom, four season washrooms um, just across our citywide parks. So this is a community park and our um, typical community parks do not have uh, permanent washrooms and that's um, in line with our guidelines. Um, if the site had enough amenities and enough draw for people, we would consider the, the portable uh, washroom option. Um, but we really felt that this site was meant to draw people um, walking and biking from their homes. Um, and so that on top of our standards, it really wasn't meant to draw uh, from what we heard a lot of people from across the city. And so washroom facilities weren't included. Uh, next question for Luke, uh, then Manda, if you'd like to weigh in. Um, any ideas what the hockey rink can be used for in the summer? Is there any way to have it also be a multi-use court when not being used for hockey? Same to be said for the multi-use court in the winter. Any idea what it would be used for when outside of summertime? Uh, Amanda, do you want to start or do you want me to... Uh... 
turn up? Um, I, I can certainly start and then Luke can jump in if that's what you want to do. Sure. Um, so our hockey rinks um, in the city traditionally uh, become dog off leash areas in the summertime. Um, so that's kind of the primary use. Um, we do have a couple of hard surfaced uh, hockey rinks um, where they can be a multi-use course in the summer. Uh, one of the drawbacks for that, unfortunately, is that um, they do melt faster and earlier in the spring uh, than our grass surfaced courts do. Um, so we do lose a little bit of winter use um, with our rinks when we do put those hard surfaces underneath. Um, that's a great question about the multi-use court. Um, I don't have any ideas off the top of my head, uh, so I'll just pass it off to Luke and uh, maybe he has some thoughts about winter use of that space. Sure. Um, the multi-use court, what I've seen uh, in areas that was used, uh, in, in which these were used, uh, people would clear them and um, use them as ball hockey courts. Um, some of the places, they actually flooded them. Uh, these were the ones with, with the, uh, the actual tarmac on them and actually used them as social skating rinks. So, I mean, there are various things that the multi-use sports court can be, can be used at uh, during the winter time. I guess it's up to the, to the community's uh, imagination. But like I said, I've seen these used um, as, a, as a ball hockey court um, a lot of times and it seems to be working really, really well. Thank you. I've uh, just got a couple more questions coming through, so just uh, stand by so we can read some more. Um, and yeah, thank you. Uh, we're coming to kind of the close of our first hour, so thank you very much for sticking around with us. We may not use the full uh, two-hour time block, um, but yeah, feel free to keep sending your, your questions, comments in. Um, uh, so based on the initial feedback, just um, a comment for Luke. Uh, option one could easily accommodate a pump track like amenities throughout the park. Um, and as Luke says, kids love the pump tracks. Um, could, could you define what a pump track is? Luke, are you, are you uh, familiar with that term? Uh, no, I'm not. I imagine the comment uh, addresses the uh, the, the inter interactive landscape melodies, like the stepping logs. Um, uh, Luke, can I jump in? Absolutely. Yeah, so that's a great feedback. Um, we heard a little bit about biking, very, um, very polarized views on um, bike facilities, bike amenities. Um, so we did try and incorporate a little bit of bike terrain um, or bike kind of training features in the, the bump out with the bike cramps. Um, it could, the site is large enough to, to fit a pump track. Uh, we don't currently have one of those in St. Albert. So it would be, um, in our opinion, a draw to the site. Um, it's not a huge site um, and it would have to display some other amenities. Um, we can't uh, unfortunately include a pump track track directly into the trail design. Um, all of our trails are meant to be fully accessible for all ages and abilities and pump tracks can present some challenges with uh, the grades uh, that you need to put into those to, to get the speed on the bikes. Um, so the project team felt that a pump track would, would be just that too much of a draw um, being a unique amenity uh, for St. Albert. Um, but we did try and incorporate a little bit of the bike bike features and um, the extent of the multi-use trail to at least give a little bit of length. Um, but again, we're, we're more than happy to hear through the survey um, if residents really feel strongly otherwise. And I probably should have explained a, a pump track is a up down um, either dirt or asphalt surfaced bike track um, where you gain speed by going up and down small hills um, and they're very popular and they do exist um, throughout the region. Um, but they're typically um, when you look at Edmonton, they're in large sites um, or um, regional or district parks um, in the region. Awesome. Thanks for the definition. Uh, next question for Amanda. There are a couple of paths in the area, specifically through Kingsmead Crescent and the one that runs all through Kingswood from Sir Winston. Uh, could these paths connect to the park? So we did uh, hear a lot about connectivity um, and people um, moving throughout the neighborhood, both including the park and without. Unfortunately, um, with the land that we have available to us um, and the extent of the build out of um, 
Kingsmead, or sorry, of Kingswood as a neighborhood. Um, we don't really have the opportunity with this project to extend the trail system nearly to the extent that we would like. Um, that being said, um, we have communicated with uh, the landowner, particularly of, um, in these two parcels, um, to look as they look towards development when and if that happens. Um, that trail connectivity is a huge concern for the for the residents and we'd like to continue to work with the land developer to improve all of our connections and making nice long um, trail systems throughout Kingswood as those parcels in particular um, get developed when that happens. Um, so we just had another question asking us to uh, repeat the explanation how we will select uh, between the two concepts? I am not going to remember everything I said the last time, so maybe I'll say something new this time, so I apologize for that. Um, our project team views it as not an either or. Um, what we're asking in the survey and hope to hear is the elements of each park that people really like and really support, the things they have concerns with, and we expect to come to kind of a hybrid decision. Um, we're hoping to get lots of feedback through this process and through the survey um, as well. We'll continue our technical assessments, um, our um, sustainability from a financial and an operational perspective. We'll continue to apply those lenses, um, practicality of um, timing of construction and all of that kind of stuff uh, to pull all of those factors into a decision. So again, it, it's not a pick one. Um, it's certainly asking for people to tell us what they support the most, what they have concerns with, and hopefully uh, we expect to see kind of a hybrid design at the end of the day. Um. And just to return to um, the first comment, uh, sorry, an earlier comment uh, that had, uh, they just clarified themselves. So let me uh, reread that. Uh, the question for Luke was to continue the street planting further up the boulevard, not just at the project site. Um, so if you guys would like to comment on that. I can comment on that one. Um, as you see the project boundary, um, all of the, all of the hay field that people are used to seeing is private land. Um, so the city is not actually, uh, it's not our land to plant on. Um, so we can certainly provide that feedback back to the developer. We're regularly talking with them as uh, part of this process um, and provide that feedback to them. Unfortunately though, all of the agricultural lands that do extend all the way down are not um, in the city's purview to plant. Uh, next question for Luke. The sledding hill would be nice, but with limited space, it makes it less useful space in the summertime. What could it be used for in the summer? Um, like I said uh, earlier, this it, it, it was programmed for um, as an unstructured uh, open space. Um, the metal in the summertime could be used for Past recreation. So, if somebody, even though it's you know it's a hill and and and, and it, it is on an incline, um, you know we could use people could play frisbee on it. Um, you know um, people could just roll down. Uh, you could sit on them. And again, I mentioned earlier that the views uh, looking west uh, are quite uh, interesting uh, because it's a high it would be higher ground and the views would be open. So if you have a nice uh, area where people can do a picnic, just sit down in the meadow and have a picnic. Um, and like I said earlier, the kids could roll down, uh, have fun, run around. Um, that would be basically it's open to um, what what activity goes on there would be open to the people who visit the park. Excellent. Um, next question for Amanda or uh, possibly Chad as well. Can you also gather police statistics on other parks in St. Albert, as I believe this would dispel the notion that they become hangouts? That might be referencing the social, um, the social hut, social area that maybe um, may attract teenagers. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's that's a great feedback. We are very lucky in the city of St. Albert where vandalism um, and kind of those inappropriate activities do occasionally happen in our park system as they do everywhere. Um, but we have a very respectful community. We don't have a lot of damage or vandalism seen in other communities. Um, so we can certainly see what information is available and share that if, if we have some things that we can share. So great suggestion. Thank you. Um, just got a bit of a pause in our questions. <laughs> um, for Luke or Amanda, uh, bit of a bit of a comment, suggestion, as well as question. I like option one. Could the hockey rink be a cemented area to play road hockey in the summer? Could the small skate area maybe be fenced to be used maybe as an off-leash dog run? Could the hill be made taller to sled off or maybe it can be used as an amphitheater type area in the summer? Uh, I guess I can answer the first part of it. So the sledding hill, it, like I said, and it's like the concept shows it's a small sledding hill. Uh, but the intent, if that is an option that's been chosen um, and that comes through in the preferred option, uh, we'll build it up so that there's a bit more of a slope to it. Um, and, um, you know, that, that, would be, that would be useful uh, and it would be very appropriate for, you know, if you want to have some, some decent sledding. Um, the second part of the question, could you repeat that again, please, Sarah? Uh... Could the hill be made taller to sled off, or maybe yeah. it could be used as an amphitheater type area in the summer? We haven't considered amphitheater, and I don't believe an amphitheater um, was uh, part of the preferred activities uh, during the survey. Uh, Madam, maybe you could um, add to that? Yeah, so those are some really good suggestions. Um, again, with, with things like amphitheaters or really unique features, um, we did tend to shy away from them in this park site because we did hear from quite a number of respondents that, that drawing a lot of people from across the city wasn't something that they wanted to see. Um, and so again, um, celebration spaces and event spaces are, are typically found in our citywide parks, um, although that's not always true. Um, so great suggestions and certainly please do put them in the survey. Um, so we'll look at again with the hockey rink. Um, it's certainly an option that we can look at in terms of putting a cement in. Um, it does just impact our playability of the season for the season and it eliminates the possibility of, a, of an off leash area, sorry, in the summer. Um, but these are all options that we can certainly weigh and we, we'd love to hear your thoughts through the survey as well. And perhaps from kind of an informal um, perspective for residents with, you know, with the sledding hill, it could be used as your own amphitheater if you're, you know, you're having a family gathering or particularly in COVID where our um, gathering numbers are limited indoors, but outdoors, you know, you could have up to 100 people at one point. Um, so, you know, to, to be able to gather friends and family for a bit of a gathering um, and kind of have almost like tiered seating, you know, uh, spectator seating, that, that could for sure be an option for uh, residents uh, or, or users of the park um, without requiring additional uh, amenity um, being offered, um, just using the, the hill as it is. Um, and then just uh, the first, going back to the first part of that comment, uh, could the hockey rink be a cemented area to play road hockey in the summer? Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's, um, we did consider that. It does um, shorten our skating season and it, it does eliminate the use of it really as a dog off leash area, but it's definitely an option and we do have other rinks in the city that are uh, cement based. So we will uh, definitely take that feedback um, in with the rest of the survey comments and um, consider it. Thank you. Um, and uh, next question for Amanda, uh, to talk about the phase one public participation. Please overview how public input was solicited from the beginning and how that feedback led to this session. Yeah, absolutely. So um, 
we decided we had kind of thought that it had been a long time since Parks and Kings would have been talked about. Um, we didn't really have a good sense as um, a project team of what the community was really looking for. So phase one of our um, public consultation or public engagement, uh, whichever term you prefer, um, was to really get a good sense of who was going to use the park. Um, you know, what kind of activities people really wanted to participate in, um, what are some of those long-standing or new concerns that might come with the new amenities. So we really wanted to get a really good understanding. Um, so in support of that, um, we created um, a little bit of a project overview video. I should have checked how many views we got on that, but a fair number of views on our project overview video. Um, and then we put out our survey with some of our project information and that was distributed uh, through direct mail out to 100 meters within the park, which is kind of the city's public participation policy. On top of that, we put signs outside. Um, we did social media posts. Um, we had uh, some neighborhood champions from our community development group um, share and promote we're lucky enough to have a number of staff um, that work in this neighborhood or that live in this neighborhood um, that were able to share with their neighbors um, so we kind of took a, a multi-pronged approach to try and let as many people know as we could um, about the survey and drive people to the survey um, that led to the 326 responses that we got, including um, over 200 from Kingswood residents themselves. Um, and so all of that feedback was used to create these initial concept plans. So they've been reviewed by the city administration for alignment with our standards, alignment with our policies, um, operational considerations, um, traffic considerations, parking considerations. Um, our consultants did site analysis. So um, in the interest of kind of minimizing cost and disturbance to the site, um, really worked really hard to fit those desired amenities within the existing terrain to the greatest degree possible. Um, so it was a number of factors that got us here today. So this is um, kind of a you know, early second draft of some options um, that brought us here today. And we're hoping over the next 10, 11 days to hear um, a lot from Kingswood. Uh, we have committed to having this park completed um, by the end of 2021, um, which means we do move, need to, to move quickly and, and make some good decisions really, really fast. Um, so we really are hoping to hear a lot and get some clear direction from our residents. Um, and we do have plans um, within our detailed design, um, depending on how things go with this engagement, um, to come out and do a last check on the design um, during detailed design uh, with our residents, just to make sure that we've caught all the concerns and we've balanced all of the different needs as best we can. I hope, I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, initially, just to kind of elaborate on that, uh, initially uh, for this presentation, um, we had about 30 uh, participants join us today. Um, so, uh, based on kind of the feed, you know, the number of responses we got in survey number one um, of upwards of 300, 326, um, that, you know, please share the link of the, the web page and the survey link to your neighbors if, if they weren't aware of this and uh, just encourage them to, to share their input. Um, as well as people in the surrounding area as well who may also use the park, um, please share far and wide. <laughs> We'd love yeah. the feedback. Oh, and my apologies. I did forget to mention that for this engagement, um, all of the people that opted into um, emails uh, received notification about this event last week. Um, as well, we did another mail out to all of the residents nearby and we'll also have some social media posts you'll hopefully see over the next uh, little bit as the survey is running to just drive people um, towards the survey and towards the concept plan options that are available online. Um, so we do, as Sarah said, really hope that people share all of the information far and wide, including this video will be made uh, available on the website uh, likely on Monday. Um, thank you. Okay, we'll go to the next question. Uh, for Amanda or Chad, the base of the playground was said to follow the St. Albert building standards. What are those standards? Is a non-sand base a possibility for this park? Gordon Park in Grandin is mulch. Uh, I can do that, Chad, unless you want to. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, he, um, you know, he, uh, uh, I don't have the standards in front of me, so I can't do a, a specific answer in regards to, to the, what the standard states. I do know that uh, in regards to the quality of uh, bedding that is at some parks does uh, relate also to a safety standard for the height of the objects that are at the uh, 
the park site. So obviously uh, the higher you have or the, the more risk in regards to a potential fall from an individual on the, the uh, apparatus, they do try to want to make sure that the, the, uh, the bedding material that's there, if it's mulch or if it's a recycled tire material or, um, or if it is uh, a play sand, that it's uh, acceptable in regards to help with, uh, with that type of fall condition. Uh, I will say that, but I know um, we do want to obviously use uh, innovative and unique, uh, unique uh, materials to make this uh, park uh, individual and also stand out as a gem in the community that uh, you guys want to play there and your your uh, children want to play there and it's uh, uh, something that's uh, safe and usable for everybody. Yeah, in terms of the engineering standards, um, we kind of generally use three different options. Um, sand um, is our most frequently used option. Uh, we do, in our standards, permit the use of engineered wood fiber or wood mulch, um, as well as poured in place. Some people call it the recycled tire um, rubber material. Um, those are typically, um, poured in place is typically used um, to improve accessibility. It's a very expensive um, surface playground surfacing alternative, um, but certainly not um, out of the question for this project. So we kind of have three different options within the city standards um, with sand being the default option. So we'd love to hear kind of what the concerns with sand are and what those values are um, that would make you want to choose other, make want to have us choose other choices. Thank you. Um, next question for Amanda is along the street and along the sidewalk city land. So I may have to um, perhaps follow up with you on that question because I'd have to look a little bit more closely. We do have a road right of way and a boulevard um, that is um, within the city's um, role. You can kind of see the lines on the map as they come down, um, but it is kind of the, the standard boulevard width. It's not a long not a, a wide piece of property, but I can certainly follow up with that question um, afterwards. Um, thank you. Uh, next for Luke. Do you have design drafts for the playground itself? Modern playgrounds with zip lines, climbing structures, obstacle courses seem to be far more enjoyable and used than the old school slide, monkey bars and swing. Sorry, Luke, you, you're, you're on mute. Oh, we Maybe may I'll have just jump week. in here while, yeah, sorry. while um, I'm back. I just had a, um, for some reason, I had a power bump, I guess, or something. I just I dropped a call. So my apologies, everyone. Uh, so sorry, you might have missed the question. Um, yes. OK, I'll reread. Do you have design drafts for the playground itself? Modern playgrounds with zip lines, climbing structures, obstacle courses seem to be far more enjoyable and used than the old school slide, monkey bars, and swings. At this point, we don't have, we didn't go into, into design development um, per se, because this is still at a conceptual level. However, the footprint that we have right now, uh, we do have, is based on, on playgrounds that do exist. Uh, they do have um, climbing structures in them. Uh, that can be easily accommodated. Again, it comes it comes to, um, like the examples that you see right now on the proposed amenities are fairly small uh, playgrounds. Those are taught lots like uh, age two to five. Uh, in the background, I do believe there's one that's for ages five to 12. So um, that we can certainly accommodate. And I do agree that some of the um, Playgrounds uh, are not interesting and the novelty kind of wears out quite fast. So um, in regards to zip lines, depending on the size um, of the of the playground, yeah, there, there could be some place and also it comes down to cost. Uh, but there could be some space to do some small zip lines like we see in, in some of the uh, other urban playgrounds. Yeah, and just to, to follow up with the question, um, 
when we move um, towards detailed design and selecting our contractor, that's kind of the point where um, the playground design gets kind of finalized. Um, but we'd love to hear the elements um, within any type of playground that you'd like to see. So please do include those comments in your survey response. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll just do a last call for any final questions at this point. Uh, one or two more would be happy to take and respond. Um, uh, we've got one more question uh, to read, but yes, please, please send your last questions in. Um, for Amanda, how many remaining hectares of MR are due to be dedicated upon full build out of the neighborhood? Um, so this particular site um, in the area structure plan is currently 7.3 hectares. So this park is 2.3 hectares. So hopefully my math is okay and there's five remaining hectares um, within um, this kind of chunk of Kingswood. Um, and there are some other pieces. There's about 0.8 of a hectare um, along Poirier Ave indicated in the area structure plan. Um, and there's still a little bit of cleanup with the total amounts owed um, that isn't allocated towards a specific space. And I'm, I'm really sorry, I don't have the exact total here, but it's um, uh, somewhere in the 6.2, 6.3 hectare range uh, it, that is um, ultimately owed on this neighborhood. We'll just wait for any last questions to come in. Um, Okay, and also just uh, just to note for everyone um, that the all the comments and questions um, provided in the Q and A uh, will be saved and taken into consideration, even if we haven't read every single one of them um, verbally in this presentation. They they will be reviewed and uh, considered as part of um, all of the feedback that we received from the survey that accompanies this presentation, as well as the um, discussion we've had here uh, this evening. Um, and all right, last question for Luke. Drum roll, please. <laughs> um, Just waiting for it here. Um, and yeah, this has been a really informative presentation. So thank you everyone for joining and participating. We uh, couldn't have made this presentation as entertaining without, without your questions and comments. So thank you very much for joining and um, sharing your feedback. Um, is, okay, question for Luke. Is outdoor exercise equipment a possibility to incorporate into option one? This seems to be a low cost, high use amenity in, in the parks that have these in them and would go nicely with the theme of interactive calming. Um, yeah, the outdoor exercise in option one, uh, actually the, the stepping hours of balance beams that is what we consider, I guess, the natural, the natural approach uh, to outdoor exercise equipment. Um, there, there is some, depending on, on the cost, depending on complexity of, of the type of equipment that community would like, there are a lot of options out there uh, for outdoor exercise equipment. Um, the, in my experience, the, uh, I guess the opinions are split as to uh, if they're a good idea or not. Um, some of them are subject to vandalism depending on the community or the area in, in certain certain uh, municipalities. Uh, others, some people see them as eyesore. Uh, what we try to do with the interactive amenities is basically introduce some kind of outdoor exercise equipment. Like I mentioned earlier, the uh, the path, the, the multi-use trail is roughly one kilometer long. It's a loop. It's not in, in, in straight straight uh, distance, but it's almost a one kilometer loop. So somebody could easily take that. And of course, the park can be modified or some things can be added to make it even more interesting. But uh, the idea behind having the, the interactive landscape elements was not only to kind of like have something of a, of a fun element in there, but also use as an outdoor exercise equipment per se. We can make it a bit more complex also using the same materials, logs, stumps, uh, planks, you know, and various other natural materials, stepping stones, stepping boulders like we've used before. Uh, but 
that was a consideration when we did that, and that's why we put those interactive elements in there because we figured people might want um, outdoor exercise equipment, but that doesn't look like it. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, well, that will that concludes our question and answer uh, for the presentation. Um, just as a reminder, please uh, return to the project website and that's where you'll find the link to the survey. We've also just got the link here up on the screen um, for kind of easy typing in. Um, and yeah, Amanda, if you would, would like to make some closing remarks. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, so again, just to echo Sarah's comments um, earlier, we really appreciate your time this evening. Uh, please share the survey, share the concept plans, share your opinions, uh, share everything. Um, we're really excited to hear uh, from you. Um, I would also like to, I don't know if they can throw on their cameras, just uh, acknowledge Tara and Wade, who you didn't see on your screen all evening, but have been working really hard to um, kind of summarize and provide all of those questions to Sarah. So they've been working really hard tonight. So we just want to say thank you to the two of them, even though their faces haven't been on the screen. Um, so our survey will be open until October 26th. Um, as I mentioned, we are moving quite quick with this project because we heard a lot of, please get it built as soon as you can. Um, so we're, we're endeavoring to do this as fast as we can while still being responsive uh, to your feedback and making really good decisions. So please share uh, far and wide. And again, thank you so much for your time and thank you to IBI and to uh, Chad for joining us tonight as well. <laughs>